So, when I worked in a hospital in grade 10 and researched medical technology, it gave me a passion for seeing how this technology could be used to solve problems, especially artificial intelligence, also known as AI. As expected, I found that in my field, AI helps to diagnose ailments or improve care delivery. For example, DeepMind Optometry has created an AI program that's capable of diagnosing over 50 eye diseases, better than most seasoned experts, with a 94.1% accuracy rate. It does this by using algorithms powered by a process called machine learning, where we feed it data and show it the task we want it to complete, repeatedly, until it can complete that task on its own, on new data. And then, crucially, but in a gross oversimplification, learn from itself to perfect its own pattern recognition abilities. AI can act as an extra set of eyes when looking at lab tests or scans to find patterns that we couldn't find, which means that we can translate huge amounts of data into answers that we understand. But what I also found was that for a lot of people, this isn't going to mean a lot. Because what I found was that although AI can do these wonderful things, it can reproduce and reinforce the effects of human bias, especially societal discrimination. And it's this bias that I want to talk about today, because it affects us all. At a time when we're grappling with the long-standing systemic biases in fields like medicine, which already cause thousands of casualties per year, including disparities in the way women and ethnic minorities are referred for joint replacement, are treated for chronic conditions, or even disparities between the huge mortality rate difference between black and white women after childbirth. Understanding that despite its promises, AI is at risk of helping to perpetuate these biases is crucial for us all. Now, what does AI actually have to do with discrimination? It's a program, right? It processes information. Well, AI learns by analyzing data, which is its entire world. And it's only as good as this data because it analyzes and finds patterns without the context of their true significance. For example, a medical school in the 1980s wanted to create an AI program that would help it process its applications using successful and non-successful applications as training data so that it could find it could find characteristics that correlated positively with admission. Unfortunately, um, the AI also found that since most of successful applications in the past had been both men and people without an immigrant background, it also considered those things as good characteristics and their opposites as negative, reproducing and reinforcing the effects of discrimination that may have been either intentional or unintentional. If the training data has a bias, so does the program. And you might think, OK, this is a thing of the past. It was the 80s. We're past that. Well, in 2017, according to Reuters, an Amazon hiring AI had to be discontinued because it taught itself to discriminate against female applicants for the exact same reason. Another example is how, since almost all training data in the, in the medical field of melanoma or skin cancer is of white skin, the, the praise it's gained for diagnostic accuracy means very little to people with darker skin. As his, and similar problems exist in the consistent underdiagnosis of angina in women, as historical data relies on men's symptoms, which are experienced far differently. Now, I'm not saying these diagnostic biases or the biases in the hiring are new, but it just perpetuates a bias that stood for decades in those fields. But artificial intelligence could automate those biases on a huge scale if we let it. If you train an algorithm on historical data that contains a bias and don't warn it of that, it will pick up on its bias and perpetuate it because it doesn't know what it's looking at. One way to reduce AI bias would be to have diverse, full-spectrum training data encompassing all of society. However, only having diverse training data doesn't guarantee the elimination of bias, because in choosing what to include, the programmer can accidentally include their own beliefs or loopholes into the software, showing the need for diverse engineering teams who bring different perspectives to the table and who, in doing so, might even come from different fields, so as to be able to incorporate and look out for the role of diversity, social equality, or ethics when making AI programs. 
Another challenge we're facing is that there's little transparency or oversight in both how the algorithms get their results and how they're used. For example, in the USA, the Algorithmic Accountability Act says that large companies must run assessments of their AI systems, but it doesn't make them publish them. So if the AI goes wrong, no one really needs to know. Accountability is key. When companies start AI projects, they should perform risk assessment and risk mitigation, record these processes, and report outwards often to the public or to an oversight body. And you might be asking, OK, well, I mean, this doesn't concern me. What can I do about this? What's being done about this? Well, it's not that simple, because in 2019, legislators in California recognized that facial technology, facial recognition AI, had huge bias problems and banned any use of the technology, especially by police departments, on the streets of San Francisco, as it would have led to false arrests, especially disproportionately affecting ethnic minorities. This ruling was partly in, in part due to pressure by the community, showing the power that citizens like you or me can have in these discussions and need to take responsibility for. Our job is to educate, spread awareness, and to stay vigilant on this topic and apply pressure to organizations who use AI to use it responsibly or put use of it on hold until it can be used responsibly. That's why improving awareness is the first step towards fighting this bias. It's why I'm here today. It's important on three levels. For those creating the AI, for those commissioning it and, or using it, and for people like you or me who are going to be affected by it. Most of the time, the creator of the AI, of course they don't set out to discriminate. And being aware of the risks of that happening will help prevent that. Enhancing science curricula to teach how AI might reinforce social inequalities, for example, would be paramount to making researchers and programmers confront AI risks. We should also be careful so far not to be over-reliant on machine learning yet, as though it's a promising technology, it kind of eliminates vital human inputs from decision-making in the way we have it now. And as I mentioned, improving awareness is only the first step. In truth, there are several levels to fighting the biases that AI discrimination uncovers. Fixing individual AI programs and demanding transparency from their users is a crucial solution, is the first solution, but is also a surface-level solution to the problems uncovered by this issue. Next come longer-term changes, such as changes to research funding, publication, or education about the role of equality, diversity, and social, social equality in STEM fields. Then, we also actually have to start combating and undoing the social inequalities that the AI uncovers and that the AI amplifies. Because in truth, all that a program is doing is serving as an amplifier to inequalities that already exist. So, what does this all mean? Well, in essence, despite what you may hear in the media, our current challenge with AI isn't fighting for our lives against sentient robots yet, but thinking critically about the technology we use and whether it reinforces or prevents discrimination. Today, I've just wanted to give you a surface-level description of this huge emerging field. AI has enormous potential, but we must be careful because rather than remove human biases from important decisions, artificial intelligence can and might automate them as long as we allow it to. Improving our understanding of the flaws and pitfalls of AI is crucial to our development because this isn't just about medicine or a single field. AI programs will be used more and more in banking, hiring, college admissions, and every year there's already a new scandal about a program's unforeseeable biases. Amazon, prison systems, college admissions. It's about time that we learn to realize and confront this. This is about how technology will change all our lives for better or for worse, how it can change them, and how making sure social equality is something that we consistently strive for is crucial to building a sustainable society that we all are included in and want to live in. This is the future that I fight for, and I hope that after this talk, so do you. Thank you.